Can yep. Yes? Yep. Okay. That's it. I can hear myself now as well. Uh, welcome to this uh, short conversation um, with my, my guest here. We have, we have Mario, who is that end and not sitting under his picture. So Mario is the head of customer strategy inside British Gas. And we have Kapil, who is next to me here, is from Kantar. So today we're going to talk about um, consumer insights and increasingly fluid marketplace, as, it's, as it says up there. And one of the challenges we have, unlike previous category with Heineken, something like British Gas and, and utilities is actually a low interest. So obtaining insights around that can sometimes be challenging or not as exciting as some of the more experiential brands. So I'm going to, but I'm actually going to start off with a question to Capital, which is Kantar, TGI, etc. are often seen as media tools, agency tools. So what are you bringing when you're talking directly to the advertisers? So what, what, ad, what is the added value there? Yeah, sure. So um... Just, just for, for clarity, TGI is uh, the target group index. Um, we're the market research division within Kantar, Kantar Media to be precise. Uh, and what we do is we, we run a single source survey-led data set um, across various countries. Uh, and for the purpose of today's conversation, we'll talk about GB. Um, and what we aim to do is we, we pretty much help agencies, media owners and advertisers get a 360 degree understanding of consumers um, and in a nutshell, the who, the why and the how. And um, as much as we've been used by media, pretty much every single media agency and, and most media owners to understand their consumers and, and help plan for their clients if you're an agency, um, in these extraordinary times that we're living in right now, we're seeing advertisers um, becoming a bit more creative with how they go about planning their creative, um, you know, determining the tonality they're going to use when speaking to a consumer. And from, from TGI's perspective, we're able to help them um, with the existing understanding that they have on their consumers. Uh, and further elaborate that, with, you know, giving them market research insight around areas such as why someone would want to buy something that's more expensive. Uh, I mean, personally speaking, as a, with my consumer hat now, you know, in normal times, I'd upgrade my phone. But, you know, with 7.5%, uh, you know, the interest rate for, with current inflation, it's making me think twice. So if you're a brand and you're an advertiser and you really want to understand from a nat rep level point of view how to go about communicating to your target consumer and growing your consumer base, um, you, you'd want to you, you'd want to know it from a market research perspective, and that's how we're we're sort of helping advertisers, helping them fill the, the blind spots that they have. Okay. So Mario, so why did you start working with Cantal? What was it going to bring to you? As you as you mentioned earlier, Rach, we work energy is, is a very low engagement sector. Consumers don't really want to spend a lot of time with us. I think on average they spend about 30 seconds to a minute with their energy supplier. It's recently changed with the cost of living crisis, but ultimately it's something people don't really want to deal with. Um, we are a very functional sector, and that reverberates through the entire organization. Most of our colleagues know very well uh, the data sets we have. The data describes very well the how and the what of our consumer behavior. But what we don't really understand particularly well is the why, is the motivation. And as you all know, the motivation is the bit that gives us the, the right messaging, gives us the right hook for, for us to be successful in a sector that's uh, commoditized. I think we share the level of commoditization with painkillers and with motor oils. If anybody's in the audience from painkillers or motor oil, come and see me afterwards. We exchange ideas. So people don't really see the difference between one supplier and the other. And what we really want to get to is understand these audiences better. Uh, as an organization, we've been around for a very long time. So we, we don't start from scratch when, when, or we didn't start from scratch when we went to TGI. Um, we use them to, for an audience framework. So most segmentation models start really big, uh, and then through qual and quant research, whichever way you want, around you want to do is you end up with sort of like a, a core audience. We had a very strong hypothesis for actually who that core audience was, so we could focus directly in on this, and we wanted a cost-effective way to do this relatively quickly to make a start. As an organization, I think over the last couple of years, we've become very lean. Uh, we stood up a whole new energy business called New Energy Platforms, just to deliver more simplified, cheaper energy into the, into the UK consumer and, and small business market. And with, with that mindset, we really wanted to get something that's relatively simple. It's easy to use for all of our colleagues. It's easy to target out in the audience. And this is why we uh, approached Capital to, to work with TGI. So how much of a learning curve was it within your organization to actually start doing this directly? I think the biggest learning for us was it, TGI is not a data set to sort of like dabble around with. The, the initial idea was it's four of us in the team. We cover uh, customer strategy and insights. So we are, we are a relatively small team. We thought oh, we all chip in. Everybody gets trained up. Everybody does a bit of work with TGI. And it quickly turned out it, it doesn't work like that. So we appointed two people 
in the team that become the real champions for TGI. They work with it all the time. And the advantage of this is they really gotten very deep into the data. They, they went beyond what our original focus of research was, and they discovered some more very interesting or interesting aspects of our customers and consumers that we can then use to bring these to life. Uh, it also has, has the benefit, I can just go and say, look, this, this particular idea has just come up. How do we find this with our core target audience? What does this look like? Is this something that's, inter that's interesting to them or not? So I think the biggest learning for me was to get a, get a, get a TGI champion in your team ready and don't just uh, dabble around with it because you get lost in 700 different uh, 700 pages of questions. I, I mean, just to add to that, um, the reality at the end of the day is the question that you know, most advertisers have in, in the current time is, will a consumer do what they would have done two, three years ago? Um, and the challenge that they have is not knowing the actual answer and then having to you know, determine budget based on not knowing exactly what the outcome will be. So the, the ability of using you know, single source market research, a survey-based data set, allows you to, to gauge the, the consumer's propensity to engage with your product. Uh, and I know the lady from Heineken earlier was talking about using various market research uh, in the year to come. But just like British Gas, with, with what Mario has been tasked with, him and his new team, um, they're, they're really looking to understand whether in, in these current times, you know, consumers in, in, in Great Britain will be willing to actually engage with it. And, and you know, what survey-led data can do is it can actually let you know more about the consumer outside of your category. Because obviously you guys, British Gas, you know, a household name here in the UK, you probably have a very good understanding of your existing audience base. But what they do outside of other sectors, their interests, their motivations, you know, what their semi-conscious drivers are, are, are key things you know, in these current times that you'll need when determining a, a marketing strategy. So, so yeah, it's, it, is, it is a very robust survey. It's massive, but yes, we do have a TGI championship program that we're, that we're working on with, with British Gas to get the best out of it. Do you find you need to do the same thing with, with your other clients as well? Of course. Th their, their approaches are having champions and stuff like that, or of is there other different approaches? So, so the thing is, we're, we're, we're being very aligned with our advertiser clients, because at the end of the day, the media agency has a huge role to play. It's just what you're finding with um, our advertiser practice at Kantar TGI is, it's a bit more than media enablement that they're coming to us for. So it's, it's actually, they're looking to start from ground up and really build audience segments which then they want their agencies using. And the beauty about a product like TGI is pretty much every agency has it. So if you have the insights teams within the, the advertisers using it, they're all singing from the same hymn. So at the end of the day, it's in our best interest to make sure that you know, our data is used by our clients. And um, you know, programs such as the TGI Champion program really builds out success for the client, but also for the individual that's being trained as a champion. Because you know, I've, I've, I've been in the industry for the last 15 years, and uh, you know speaking to people where I work at, TGI is pretty much a household name if you're working in market research. So having that accreditation does help the individual as well. Okay. So Maria, so you've got, you've got all of this then, you've got to train people in. What is it bringing to you? What benefits are you, you d getting delivered from this? I, th I think first and foremost, it's enabled us to, to build an audience framework very quickly up from scratch. Uh, TGI is, sort of, is a living data set. So you, any segmentation model you develop, as soon as you put it down in a PowerPoint or in a video, it starts to wither and it starts to die and it starts to age. And I think with TGI, we were able to get something very quickly off the start, go out to the organization and we say, well, look, th this is what we know about the, about the core audiences so far. These are the main needs, these are the drivers. And you can, A, refresh this at any time, but you can also bring different dimensions into it. Uh, just the other day, there was an article in The Guardian about how in California, sustainability is now linked to Health, or they're trying to link sustainability to health outcomes because that's the biggest driver or that's the biggest challenge that consumers see for themselves is their own health. So if something like this should come, should come across the Atlantic, we could easily just overlay attitudes of health to this. We can look at partnerships, you know, if it's partnering with supermarkets, automotive industry, uh, with, with any, so, any sort of other company streaming service, we can easily then see how this, how this sits with our own audience, with our target uh, groups, and, and who we need to address this to. And then Kapil mentioned it earlier, I think once you base your audience work onto TGI, you can easily just replicate this in pretty much every, uh, every single work we do. We have a customer experience feedback program. We can integrate the TGI audience as seamless into this. It integrates into your brand tracking, into pretty much everything you do, every research project. But I think the key to all of this is to keep it really simple. We've built a, a, set, a set of five core audiences, and each of those is just focused on one single need. So when somebody develops a piece of comms or a piece of product, 
uh, a proposition for this audience. They know exactly what they're looking for and what they need to deliver and what need they, they need to satisfy. And that makes it incredibly easy for, for, our, uh, for our colleagues to so like identify with these audiences and know exactly who they are. We don't just rely, I'm sorry to say, Kappa, we don't just rely on TGI, we sort of like build um, customer engagement around this. We have customer safaris where we invite colleagues into the home of, of these specific consumers to really get close to them and understand them better. But I think it's ultimately the live data set that helps us to keep this alive and to just not having to predict every single outcome at the outset of, of the segmentation model, but we can sort of like add to it if, as, as, uh, as we go along. And that's just not possible with the static segmentation model that, that we used to have in the past. Was it an easy sell internally to get something like this? Because from the sound of it, it looks like it's, it's spread around a bit now. It, it, it was a relatively easy sell. We had a segmentation model previously that was based on eight segments across six dimensions, each dimension graded. And when you do something like this, you end up in something like Euclidean spaces. And uh, I would ask everybody to raise your hand if you know what this is, because I didn't before I started this. And it's just incredibly complicated for colleagues with the with another day job to really understand who these audiences are to fully get under the skin of this. And by simplifying this and being able to sort of like demonstrate, look, here's one persona, here's another, all they want is this, or all you need to do for these people is, is solve this problem. It just becomes uh, something they can integrate into their day job rather than a document that I'm sure we've all got them in our inbox. We thought, oh, that's really interesting. I'll read this as a, at another day, but ultimately, we never get around to it. And, and this segmentation will really happens to sort of like live and breathe in the organization. Okay. I, I think just, just to add to that, <clears throat> Mario, you're 100% correct. At the end of the day, <clears throat> TGI will not be your, your, your silver bullet for your strategy 100%. It'll contribute to that. And I think what you mentioned about <clears throat> having your own segmentations and segments, that, that's something that you know, we do a lot with clients, and what we do is we recreate their segments within TGI. So as I mentioned earlier, they've, they've already got a certain level of understanding, be it via omnibus surveys or various other methods, but by having a, a TGI data set, a nat rep level data set to their, to their, to their hands, they're, they're able to then recreate those segments. So they can go out, ask three questions, and they can then map that back, and then working with our teams, use some various golden questions and, and hook methods to, to actually get a broader perspective of that segment, which ultimately, can then be pushed to the creative team to, to, to build creative based on you know, each consumer, what they've learned, and then ultimately to, to activation. So I think from our perspective, um, as I mentioned, you know, we work very closely with media agencies, media owners, and we're, we're seeing a rise in advertisers coming to work with us purely from a pure play insight um, level. So, so yeah, it's, it's, it's very exciting what we're doing with you guys. And, yeah. So, but, so what next, Samaria? So how, how long have you had the system in and where, where are you going to go with this team now? Because you said it's a relatively new team. Yeah, so we've, we've set the, well, as an organisation, we're relatively new. British Gas has been around, I think, for 200 years, but we've uh, stood up this new energy organisation about a year and a half ago. The team, as it is now, was formed about six months ago, and this is when we came to Capital and so I started to use TGI. I think the, the future for us really is to challenge ourselves to keep things simple. We are... As I mentioned earlier, we're a very lean organization. And what comes with lean is it needs to reverberate through the entire, to, to everything we do. The inside team, the way we, we look at segmentation, the way we handle our research and everything needs to be aligned to this. And it's, it's, really, it's, it's just keep it simple and really think about what, what do you really need and when is good, good enough, just good enough, and when do you need to do the extra work? Because a lot of times you see very complicated pieces of research that deliver accuracy to the nth degree, but I think if you have something like TGI in the background, you can easily just size things up and say, well, here's hypothesis, let's just go with this, let's test it, and let's see how we do with that. And that, I think that, for me, is the future of, of insight, really. It's, it's much more data-driven than it's ever been, yep. but a lot of the data can just answer the question of the how and the what and not the why, and I think this is where we come in as, a, as an insight team. We, we answer the why and we use different methodologies, and, and one key one for us going forward will be, will be TGI. And a, and a quantifiable data set. And is there a future roadmap for your data set? Or which way you're going with that? Uh, look, we, we've been around for a while and we've, we've you know, um, stood the test of time. And the, the only reason why we've done that is because we listen to our clients and we continue to, to deliver based on what they need. Because at the end of the day, um, our research is only as good as the investment they provide us and the insight they feed back to us. So from our perspective, I guess, you know, based on current economic circumstances, as well as you know, industry-related um, challenges we have, um, you know, to be successful in people-based marketing, I think everyone here will probably say it, you need to have a really good audience strategy. Um, and we see 
ourselves playing a huge role together with other companies like us and various other technologies in, in, in making sure we do this in a user-consented manner uh, and also ultimately helping the advertiser you know, grow their business. So we have just under three minutes left. So that sounds like there's any questions out there. Oh, I can see, I vaguely see hands over there. Is there a mic? They ought to give everybody big wavy ones so I can actually see against the lights. Do we have a question? No. <coughs> okay, uh, Rob from uh, Sports News Television. Uh, I used to work with TGI for a media owner for a lot of years and I always found um, kind of striking the balance between using it to uh, maybe back up a hypothesis that uh, state, uh, you know, stakeholders already had and then trying to find some justification why to go ahead with that using stats and data or an insight or vice versa, um, kind of actually analysing the data set first and then feeding strategy off the back of that. Um, I'm kind of just interested to how you balance and strike a balance between that or is it very data-led first or is it something that you use uh, occasionally to kind of back up something you want to try already? Was that, was that one for Mario? Uh, yeah, for Mario. Sounded like yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think the benefit we had before we started using TGI is we have already been around for a long time. We understand our market very well. We know what the drivers are. We've, we've done a lot of qual research in the past around various projects. We also do home services. We've got a big focus for the organization for many years. So we, had, we, we didn't start from scratch. And I think this, this is the, probably the key to just uh, becoming data-led a, at a later stage. So once you have a hypothesis, you're fairly, you're fairly confident in it. And I think we just trusted our own judgment in this and said, well, we, we know what people want. We've heard it many times from different directions, different projects. And what we did with TGI is basically quantify this and give us the, the confidence that these, these are not eight people we are talking to or four people in a, in, a, in a different set. These are actually millions of consumers that have similar attitudes and that help us to to find growth audiences, but also help us to find the core audience within our existing customer base. So I think you, need, you still need the, the, you need either hypothesis or you need the knowledge, what you're looking for, and then you, you can build it out and you, and you can confirm it with, with, with TGI data or with any other large data set. But I think the, the benefit here is it has a lot of attitudinal data in it that, that we could overlay. We've done a lot of matching I think it's fair to say TGI is very retail focused when it comes, not so much energy focused, but we did data matching through omnibus surveys and we found actually very high propensity for people to have similar attitudes in, in both. No matter how commoditized we, th we all think energy is, if I'm prepared to pay a bit more for good service in, in a shop, then I'm also to do this, uh, prepared to do this with an energy provider. So uh, matching different data sets up and, and, and really understanding where your core is, I think is, is key to, to choosing this route. And that's we only have time for that one, um, according to the clock here. So thank you very much. Thank you to the panel. Thank Hope you. you enjoyed that. Okay.